Welcome back to blog number something aboard the CFAS Endeavour. As you may remember, last time I was talking about eDNA. What I did not talk about is how we actually collect that eDNA, which is what we're doing on board this vessel every day and every night. So the way this works is that every night I wake up at midnight and generally speaking, at some point during the night, there is going to be what we call a rosette deployment. It's such a pretty name, a rosette. It almost sounds French, une rosette. Wait a minute, maybe it is French. Anyway, the rosette is a water sampling device that consists of several Niskin bottles, as we call them. On board the Endeavour, we currently have a relatively small rosette with 12 10 liter bottles. The concept of the rosette is really cool. As the bottles are going down, both ends are open, which means that you have seawater that is just running through your bottles as it's going down. Now, there's a cable that electronically connects a central part of the rosette to which the cap of the bottles are attached all the way up to the ship. And on the ship, you can actually decide to close these bottles at a very specific depth. And when it closes, it encases the seawater from that depth. And it's going to bring back up the seawater from that depth. And you can do that with all 12 bottles. You can decide where they close and when they close. That is in a nutshell, the concept of a rosette. Now, a rosette is often called a rosette CTD because it often comes with a device called a CTD. The CTD can take all sorts of oceanographic measurements, such as water temperature, water salinity, fluorescence, density, etc. So it's really cool because as your rosette is going down, you have the screen and you can actually see what the water temperature is like. And what's usually going to happen, although that depends where you are, is that you may either have one water mass and the temperature is going to be consistent from bottom to top or you can have several water masses. And so what happens is that ecologically, these different water masses are quite different. You have different organisms that are going to occur in these different water masses because they have different temperature preferences, different salinity preferences, etc. So when the rosette comes back up, because we have two different water masses around here, it's going to have closed four bottles at one of the water mass and four bottles at another water mass. And then what we do when the rosette is back on deck is that we take the water from these Niskin bottles, put it into a smaller two liter bottle, and then we filter that water. Unfortunately, as interesting as eDNA is, filtering water is boring. But the idea that you're actually collecting DNA from these water masses, DNA that comes from the organisms that are currently swimming in there, is just so cool that it's worth the boredom. So we filter and filter and filter liters and liters and liters of water every day and every night. That's what we do on board right now. We filter water, a lot of water. Well, we, we, we spend our life filtering and washing, but mostly washing and filtering. What's going to happen afterwards is that Chris is collecting all these filters. So because we're doing so many stations every day, he's collecting a lot of samples. Again, if you want to have more information about Chris's project, I'll put a link in the description below to his website and I'll put another link in the description below to our lab's website. On that note, I will return to my water. Eh. I guess you just gotta get used to the fact that you're constantly ingesting a lot of DNA.